On a blustery, cold December day, a beautiful moored ocean liner heaved and hawed against her moorings as the stormy ocean rocked her side to side. Like a reluctant Mustang restrained by a lead, she bucked and recoiled against the moorings until these lines could take no more, and without warning the vessel freed herself from the dock. In the throes of the stormy ocean and with no master to stop her, she careened into a nearby capsized vessel, thus dooming her to sinking into a shallow grave. Welcome to Shipwreck Sunday, where we investigate disasters at sea and the impact that they have on the world today. My name is Eleanor. Today we will be discussing the incredible career, sinking, and miraculous recovery of the German ocean liner SS Europa. If you like ocean liners with unique stories, you'll love this episode. Quick disclaimer for our younger audience before we dive in. This story does include details of a maritime disaster resulting in the loss of a vessel, Nazism, and wartime violence that may be disturbing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised for those under the age of 13. Please keep in mind that I'm not a mariner or expert in the field of maritime history, but I've done my research. Okay everyone, let's get into it. Welcome to part two of our special on SS Bremen and SS Europa, and this week it's SS Europa's turn. Just like her older sister, SS Europa was an ocean liner that was originally built for the Norddeutscher Lloyd Line. She was ordered in 1927 through Blom and Voss shipyard in Hamburg, Germany, and she was to be the second 50,000 gross tons liner for the North German Lloyd Line. Before we continue with her history, let's really dive into the specs. SS Europa displaced 55,500 long tons or 56,400 tons and her tonnage tapped out at 49,746 gross registered tons. In imperial measurements, the ocean liner was 936.7 feet long, had a beam of 101.7 feet wide, and a height of 150.6 feet tall, spanning 12 decks. In metric measurements, she was 283.5 meters long, had a beam of 31 meters wide, and a height of 45.9 meters tall. She was painted in the standard paint scheme for Norddeutscher Lloyd at the time, a black hull, white superstructure, and two solid amber funnels. And just like SS Bremen, she would have a catapult on her upper deck along with a small seaplane to make mail delivery quicker and more efficient. In line with SS Bremen, she had a bulbous bow entry and low streamlined profile, though she was slightly smaller than SS Bremen. For those who don't know, a bulbous bow is a protruding bulb at the bow of a ship just below the waterline. The bulb modifies the way the water flows around the hull, reducing drag and thus increasing speed, range, fuel efficiency, and stability. One of the first ships to implement this was the French ocean liner SS Normandy, and we have an episode on her if you're interested. Now, if you remember from our video on SS Bremen, the two ships had a very unique engine setup that made them incredibly efficient and fast. The ships were designed to have a cruising speed of 27.5 knots, which would allow a transatlantic crossing time of just 5 days, and this means that these two sister ships could run a weekly transatlantic service without the need for a third sister. Even RMS Lusitania and RMS Mauritania, two incredible Cunarders that were both blue ribboned winners, needed RMS Aquitania. Her boiler and machine equipment were both designed by Professor Dr. Gustav Bauer, and just like SS Bremen, SS Europa had four airtight boiler rooms. You heard correctly, airtight. That's very uncommon for ships. The reason behind this is because the combustion air for the oil burners of the boilers would be blown into the boiler rooms by eight steam turbine blowers, and as a result, the positive pressure made the boiler rooms only accessible by airlocks. The steam needed for the engines was generated in 20 water tube boilers that were oil fired, 11 of them being double enders and 9 being single enders, laid out in 4 banks fired by a total of 227 oil burners. This setup fed 4 sets of geared steam turbines that turned 4 screws, and combined, these 4 steam turbines could generate up to 105,000 horsepower. As for capacity, SS Europa could carry 2,195 total passengers broken up into four different classes. She could carry 860 first class, 502 second class, 305 tourist class, and 617 third class. 
If you're wondering why she had four classes, this was during the transitionary time from having first, second, and third to having more of a first class and tourist class, since immigration on the Atlantic really started to slow down as airplanes became more popular. This is especially true as we enter the 1940s and 1950s. As for her crew, she averaged 965 crew members. If you're enjoying this video, let me know down in the comment section below. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more stories like this one. If you're on an audio-only format like Spotify, Samsung Podcasts, Amazon Music, or another podcast service, make sure to subscribe for more episodes and leave us a 5-star review since it helps us reach more listeners like you. Okay, back to SS Europa. SS Europa was launched at the Blom & Voss shipyard in Hamburg, Germany on Wednesday, August 15, 1928, and she'd be christened SS Europa that same day. Although it was intended that SS Europa would be completed in the spring of 1929, fate had other plans. On the morning of March 26, 1929, a fire broke out aboard SS Europa as she sat in the equipment dock. We still don't know why this fire started, but we do know it spread fast. The fire quickly ate at the ship, and it wasn't under control until the evening, and this left the beautiful ocean liner a smoking hulk with severely damaged turbines and a badly damaged hull. There were lengthy discussions about whether the ship should just be scrapped or not, and finally, Norddeutscher Lloyd and Blom and Voss agreed to repair the vessel. This would ultimately delay her completion for 11 months to February 22, 1930. Finally, SS Europa could begin her career on the Atlantic alongside her already successful Blue Ribbon winning sister ship. Since the next part of the story we will be talking about the Blue Ribbon quite a bit, let's explain exactly what it is for our younger listeners. The Blue Ribbon is an unofficial accolade given to the passenger liner crossing the Atlantic Ocean in regular service with the record highest average speed. You could win the Blue Ribbon for both the west and eastbound crossings, and interestingly enough, the term Blue Ribbon came from horse racing and wasn't widely used until after 1910, though ships were winning the prize long before 1910. We've covered several Blue Ribbon winners, including RMS Lusitania, and I'll link her episode if you're interested. Okay, now that we know what the Blue Ribbon is, let's see how it ties into SS Europa's story. SS Europa's maiden voyage from Bremerhaven, Germany, commenced on March 19, 1930, and she headed for New York City, New York, in the United States. During this maiden voyage, she snatched up the blue ribbon from her sister, SS Bremen, having averaged 27.91 knots and crossing the Atlantic Ocean in just 4 days, 17 hours, and 6 minutes. That is incredible. Even for today's standards, that is a very fast crossing across the Atlantic. You know what the biggest problem was with this incredible journey? SS Europa, just like her sister, had two very low-profile funnels, and these funnels were dumping out a lot of soot onto the deck, and this really concerned many of the passengers on this maiden voyage who were having the soot rained down upon them. To correct this, her funnels and SS Bremen's funnels were raised 15 feet, or 4.572 meters. This made her profile less sleek and low, but fixed the soot problem. Just like SS Bremen, her seaplane carried mail to the shore days before her arrival, having been launched from the catapult up on deck. This plane would fly into the port in Blexen to drop off sacks of mail before returning to SS Europa, and then she would run into the port a day or two later. After a few years of service, both the catapults on SS Bremen and SS Europa would be removed. That makes me so sad. It was such a unique feature on both vessels and such an incredible innovation for the time. If you want to hear about another highly innovative vessel for her time, check out our video on SS Laurentic, a ship fast enough to chase down a murderous duo. SS Bremen and SS Europa would serve the seas for 10 years and 9 years respectively before the onset of World War II on September 1, 1939, beginning with Germany's invasion of Poland. Though there were immediate plans for SS Bremen during World War II, SS Europa would spend much of the war sitting idly in port, twiddling her thumbs and waiting for something to do. There were plans to use both SS Bremen and SS Europa in the intended invasion of Great Britain, Operation Sea Lion, but that never came to fruition. There were even talks of turning SS Europa into an aircraft carrier. Germany was severely lacking warships at the time, and they saw an opportunity to quickly convert SS Europa into what they needed. 
she'd be designated Auxiliary Aircraft Carrier 1, with plans in early 1942 calling for a carrier that would resemble a much larger Graf Zeppelin, but with a sway-backed look from the curved liner decks below flight deck level. Though it seemed easy at first, the more they pondered and scratched their heads over the design, the harder and harder it looked to accomplish. Not only that, but stability was a huge concern, and so the idea was abandoned before any real conversion work took place. So you could consider her an almost aircraft carrier, but not quite. As the war continued, there wasn't an effort put into SS Europa, and she continued to sit in Bremerhaven with nothing to do. However, in 1945, the Allies pushed through Europe, eventually close enough that the Americans captured SS Europa and the U.S. Navy would decide to use her as a troop ship, designating her USS Europa, AP-177. Interestingly, a young 28-year-old U.S. Navy ensign with the surname Dolan was the one who was handed the German captain's pistol as a sign of surrendering the vessel. Claiming her as a war prize on May 8, 1945, she'd be officially given to the U.S. Navy and commissioned as Europa 25 in August of 1945. She cleared Bremerhaven on September 11, 1945 and headed to Southampton, England, there loading 4,500 homeward-bound American troops. Successfully, she arrived in New York City on September 24, and there she'd receive some alterations to increase her troop-carrying capacity. After this, she made two more voyages to Southampton to bring American troops home to New York City. On March 15, 1946, she sailed once more from New York City to Kirkwall in the Orkney Islands, and then to Bremerhaven, where she was moored on March 24. During all of these alterations the Americans made, small fires broke out due to the removal of the ship's original high-quality fittings and installation of inferior replacements in order to compensate for material shortages in the war effort. During this time, major hull cracks were also discovered, and she'd be decommissioned on May 2, 1946, being delivered to the State Department on June 8, 1946. Later, she'd be given to the French to compensate for the loss of SS Normandy and as partial war reparations. For our younger audiences, war reparations are a levy on a defeated country forcing it to pay some of the war costs of the winning countries. This actually happened to Germany twice. They were severely punished for World War I, making the country so poor that it was vulnerable to the promises made by the Nazi party. And after World War II, Germany was once again severely punished, a debt that still haunts the country to this day. Alright folks, a quick note before we continue with the story. If you have any ships you'd like us to cover, make sure to leave us a comment with your suggestions and you might hear your favorite ship here on the podcast. Check out our community tab to keep up with us and we are also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. After World War II, the Compagnie Générale Transatlantique was given SS Europa as a war prize to replace SS Normandy, which had been carelessly destroyed by the Americans in New York City. SS Europa was transported from Bremerhaven to Le Havre, France, for a refit, and this refit was riddled with difficulties from day one. If you want to hear about another French ocean liner, check out our very first episode of Shipwreck Sunday on SS Labergeon. On December 8, 1946, SS Europa was docked in Le Havre when a nasty storm would cause her to rip loose from her moorings and collide with the capsized wreck of SS Paris, causing significant damage to the hull of SS Europa. As a result of the severe hull damage, she sank in the shallow water. The ship was raised, refloated, and repaired from April 1947 into 1949 at the Ateliers et Chantiers de Saint-Nazaire Penhoit shipyard in Saint-Nazaire only to have another unlucky streak. This ship would suffer another fire in October of 1949 that damaged some of the passenger space, but thankfully she was saved and finally entered service for the French line in 1950, this time as SS Liberté. There are some major differences between SS Europa and SS Liberté, and the most distinctive of these changes is the funnels being painted the iconic red and black design of the French line instead of the solid amber coloring they'd had when with North German Lloyd, and this marked her as unmistakably French. On August 2, 1950, she made her maiden voyage as SS Liberté, bound for New York City. The crossing was thankfully uneventful, and she would serve as a premier transatlantic liner in the French line fleet for 11 years until the arrival of the 66,000 ton SS France in 1961. During her time as a French liner, she was also an actress. 
She was featured prominently in the Jane Russell film The French Line, and Liberté would even make an appearance in the opening credits of the 1953 film How to Marry a Millionaire that starred Marilyn Monroe, Betty Grable, and Lorne McCall as well as the final scenes of the 1954 classic movie Sabrina, which starred Audrey Hepburn and Humphrey Bogart, two of my favorite classic actors. This episode couldn't be possible without our lovely patrons. Thank you all so much. If you'd like to support the channel and future episodes, go to patreon.com slash shipwrecksunday to join. Sadly, her career had to come to an end, and SS Liberté, the former German liner SS Europa, was laid up in 1962 and scrapped at La Spezia, Italy, the next year in 1963. As eventful, wild, and strange as her story was, she truly got the best ending any ship can ask for, to safely make it to the scrapyard instead of resting on the bottom of the ocean. Her impact on the shipping world is just as important as her sister SS Bremen, and both of these ocean liners were incredibly innovative for their time. If you'd like to hear about another ship with an odd story, check out our video on SS Waratah, an ocean liner that disappeared without a trace. And that's all we have for you on SS Europa. Thank you for tuning into Shipwreck Sunday. Stay tuned next week for the story of SS United States, a retired ocean liner and the last blue ribbon holder, and most importantly, a ship selected by you, our Shipbroker crew. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.